Welcome to this video where we'll talk about our active transponders today. We three, about one year ago, we released this new generation and it's available in four different versions. I'm glad to have Nikias Glor here with me today. The developer and designer of the transponder Nikias will talk about where to use which of those versions and we'll skip the car transponder today because this is obvious by its name. Um, and I have a couple of different sports races here with me and we'll just walk through them and you'll explain where to use which version because we get a lot of questions about this. The first sport I have here with me is a triathlon race. It's the classical application for active transponders, but which of those would you recommend? I would definitely go for the active uh, pro. This is a typical use case for the pro. And um, especially if you want to um, have tracking enabled um, or use stored passings, the Pro is the way to go. And typically densities and uh, speeds are perfect for the Pro. Next one I have here is a, a bicycle race, road race. And this is a race where for age groupers, let's say not for the elite riders. Yeah, so for the typical um, road race, um, cycling events, also the Pro is the answer. Um, the Pro was developed for events like this, especially the active system with the loop tape to the road is the optimal system for exactly this kind of event. And the Pro would be your choice if you have a few hundred participants and even high densities, uh, the Pro can um, handle well. Mm -hmm. So. Also here, Active Pro. Next one I have is also road race, cycling. But now we have the elite, for example, here at the uh, Tour, de, Tour de Provence in, in France. Yeah, so this is a special case for um, high profile applications, especially at the finish line with uh, lots of uh, RF signals from live TV cameras and with live TV coverage. Um, lots of things going on, very high speeds and um, elite participants. This is one of the use cases where I would suggest using the performance. And here the important thing is that uh, in many events like that you have a field of elite participants but then also non-elite participants and in most cases it's enough to just have the elite participants um, using the performance transponder. And maybe we again need to explain the way the transponder works. So we have a detection on the ground but then the issue or the important thing is to get the data from the transponder to the timing system, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the performance transponder is trimmed and tuned to have the quickest transmission of its data back to the timing system. And this is especially critical when you have live TV coverage and you want to have the results as quick as possible and as reliable as possible. That's where the performance uh, comes into play. Um, maybe to describe this a little bit more, the performance transponder is... There is no compromise um, for battery life, but everything is tuned for the highest possible performance and the quickest results. And with the Pro, um, the focus is a little bit more on battery life because um, we anticipate that in most of the events where you use the Pro, um, for you the battery life is actually more important than having the um, times in a split of a second. Okay, next one here is an uh, obstacle course race, Spartan is a, is a famous brand, also using our transponders, what would you recommend here? Yeah, here it's um, in almost all the cases is also the Pro, but you could also go for the Basic. It depends a little bit on what you want to do. Maybe we can put it in the middle and I'll explain why. Um, so the, um, the huge difference between the Basic and the Pro here is that um, the Basic does not support store mode and tracking. Uh, so if you plan to use store mode and tracking on your events, and this can be used on events like this here, um, then you have to go for the Pro. If you don't use that, um, you could also consider the basic transponder because typically it's not about speed, um, it's not about the highest precision in this kind of events. And maybe it's a little bit more about the loss rate of the transponder, especially if you anticipate that you will be losing lots of transponders, um, which in events like this can happen, um, then the basic may be the better choice. Okay, next one is mountain bike downhill, where we expect high speeds probably, but 
people, not too many people at the finish line at one time. Yeah, exactly. This would also be a typical Active Pro application. There is no question about it. I would definitely go for the Active Pro here. Next one is we have an enduro event here. Yep. Also, motocross would be, I would say, the same, not the same type of race, but the same uh, scenario a bit. So we have like motors involved. Here. Yeah. So here again, it's the Active Pro for sure. Yeah, uh, Active Pro is uh, almost always the answer. Um, and uh, but there's something important to consider. Oh, let's see if this can work. Yeah. So there's there's something important to consider here. This is. Um, don't mount the transponder directly on the fork, especially up here, um, be close to electronics. Because the way our transponder works and was designed for non-motorsports applications, um, it can, um, or the motorbike, the electronics, especially cheap LED lights, can interfere with the transponder and um, it can lead to a situation where the transponder does not hear the loop. Um, so the best practice for events like this is actually to have the rider wear the transponder on a neoprene um, strap um, around either uh, the arm or um, the ankle and that works pretty well. Okay, last one I have here is Fitness Challenge. High Rocks is a famous brand here or the Deca events like we have here. What would you recommend here? Um, here I would also go basically somewhere between pro and um, basic. Um, depends again if you want to use store mode or tracking. If you want to use store mode or tracking then um, you have to go for the pro. If that's not so important for you then the basic could also be good enough. Um, maybe here it depends a little bit on what of kind of timing requirements you have, whether you really want the uh, highest precision or not. If it's okay for you to ha not have the highest precision, then the basic is probably a pretty good choice. But as soon as you need highest precision and you want to use tracking or um, store mode, then go for the Pro. Nikki, as you designed Four different versions, like I mentioned, the, the karting transponder is as well an option for motorsports, but let's say especially for karting. We have the performance transponder, which now has only uh, one type of, of race assigned to it. Can you again explain why? Yeah, so the critical thing here about designing a transponder like this is always that you have to make compromises. And with the V2 transponder, we found that people, um, I wouldn't say weren't happy, but were asking for improvements in battery life. And um, we definitely said, okay, with the V3 transponder, we want to have a better battery life. And there are several, uh, several um, different things in the transponder which make the battery life better of the Pro, which can affect the highest profile elite events negatively. So in this case here, um, we said, okay, we don't want to do any compromise. If you go for Olympic games or if you do some world championships or the high profile road race cycling, we want to have an option for you to have the highest possible performance, uh, no matter what kind of battery life you get. And that's why we chose to do this kind of transponder. And I must say that in most cases, for most of our customers, this is not the choice. You should go for the Active Pro, especially if you're asking yourself, whether should I do pro or performance, do pro. Okay, thank you Nikias for these insights into our transponder technology. If you want to learn more, go to our website. We have a special solution section where we describe a lot of those application scenarios and recommend the best setup for it or contact our team. We're happy to help. Thank you Nikias and uh, see you next time.